According to my sound guy, the audio in last week's video was of poor quality. Is that right, Mick? What? Right, thanks. He's on the ball. Hi everyone. This video is the first part of a series of four where we're taking a look at IMU devices. That is, devices that measure movement in the real world. Today's video is all about accelerometers. Believe it or not, accelerometers are used everywhere. You'll find them in a lot of consumer products. For example, your smartphone needs to know which way is up for a lot of reasons. Cameras have image stabilizers inbuilt to steady the video. There's a whole bunch of fitness trackers around, really far too many. Even the medical industry is getting into it, tracking animal movement, navigation, personal transportation, robotics, vehicle collision detection, anti-skid airbags, machinery, gravimetry, transportation, hard drive protection, earthquake analysis, rocket stabilization. You even find it in your humble washing machine. Essentially, anywhere that requires monitoring of movement or vibration or just simply knowing which way is up. Before we delve into accelerometer construction, let's go back to some basic physics. Speed or velocity is comprised of two elements. If a certain object travels a known distance in a known amount of time, then this is known as velocity. Acceleration is how much that something increases its velocity over time. A body travelling at the same velocity over a given time frame has at the basic level a zero acceleration. When you make this body go faster, then acceleration will increase for the duration you are making it go faster. So acceleration is velocity over time. Gravity is all about acceleration. The Earth is exerting a force on everything, pulling everything in. Gravity can be expressed as a constant, which is around 0.98 meters per second per second. From the perspective of an accelerometer, the device will experience an acceleration of around 0.98 meters per second per second. This also means that if the accelerometer is falling from the sky, it will show zero acceleration. This all seems counterintuitive, but bear in mind that the accelerometer is measuring acceleration relative to its own frame of reference. From a maker's point of view, we just need to keep several facts in mind. One, the accelerometer measures acceleration. And two, since gravity is an acceleration, then usually you will want to remove this component depending on your application. Modern accelerometers are referred to as MEMS, which means Microelectromechanical System, and this is for good reason, as they both contain an electrical and mechanical component. The basic concept of an accelerometer is a small mass or proof mass with a way of measuring how that mass moves. Actually, I've got a better idea. Okay, so the best way to show you how an accelerometer works is to take that micro machine and blow up into a real world model. So I've made my handy dandy little IMU 5000. Let's take a look. That's all the basic elements of an accelerometer. Uh, it's, it's got the proof mass at one end and the armature, which in this case it's a spring, um, allowing the proof mass to deflect. So all the accelerometer needs to be able to do is be able to measure the deflection rate. So let's see what it looks like under slow motion video. There are several basic aspects to note in this slow-mo video. You can observe that when I'm holding the IMU 5000 at the top just before releasing, there's virtually no movement of that proof mass, apart from a slight oscillating wobble, and the spring is bent slightly, indicating gravity's influence on that proof mass. As I release it, you will see that the proof mass moves up, indicating a change in acceleration. Since this is a free fall, then it would be indicating zero G and would be the calibration zero point for my IMU 5000, ignoring all the other complex forces at play here. Lastly, as the IMU 5000 hits the floor, the proof mass swings down indicating a very large deceleration component. This is the basic principle of a MEMS accelerometer. However, these devices are very sensitive and designers need to solve many issues. Let's take another quick sidestep into physics again. Any mass has momentum. 
Momentum is basically the inability of an object to slow down when an opposing force is applied. Momentum is therefore expressed as mass times velocity. The larger the mass, like a truck, then the longer that mass will take to slow down, increase the opposing force, and it takes a shorter time. MEMS devices aren't immune to momentum, even though their mass is measured from nanograms to micrograms. This means that the greater the proof mass, the lower the responsiveness to changes in acceleration. So you want the mass to be as small as possible. However, if you make it too small, then the device's ability to measure high forces is reduced and will be more susceptible to vibration noises. Going back to the video, you'll notice that the spring was wobbling when I was holding it still at the top. This is caused by micro vibrations traveling along the armature. If the armature is too long, then it becomes less responsive to changes in acceleration and can also start to oscillate more. Additionally, every object has a resonance frequency, more so for long objects. Micro vibrations can cause resonance in the armature, which can introduce errors. One way of combating this is to dampen the armature. You can use liquids, gases, magnets, mechanical isolation, or even complex algorithms but essentially they all attempt to reduce the noise caused by the swing of the armature. Consequently, dampening the armature too much and the responsiveness is reduced. So MEMS designers have a trade-off between responsiveness of the MEMS versus noise immunity. Thanks for watching part A of this video. In part B, we will be looking at how accelerometers are constructed, how you can read data from an accelerometer, and different ways in dealing with errors in the data. As always, if you want further information, please go to my website, micmac.com, by clicking the button above and type MEMS or accelerometer into the search bar. If you like this channel, please subscribe by clicking the button above or the little red subscribe button in your browser or app. You can also get updates by subscribing to me on Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, and for some strange reason, Tumblr. Until then, see you next time.